everybody. Uh, thanks, Datri, and thanks everybody to be here. Um, I'm Dr. Narendra from Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute. I'm a hematologist. I'm practicing hematology for last eight, eight years and experienced more than 400 stem cell transplants till now. So, kuch basic things that I will first discuss with you. Stem cells are in every place. Every tissue has a stem cell. Our hair has a stem cell. Our skin has a stem cell. Hai. So, stem cell is a bead, a seed. Hai. Stem cell is a seed and which, which give rise to every tissue of the body. So, similarly, we have hematopoietic stem cells or blood stem cells. And then blood stem cell is a seed of blood. So stem cell transplant is basically transplant. We have to take out some seeds from the donor's uh, blood or do donor's bone marrow. And then we have to implant that seed into the patient's body so, so that a new, a new blood can be generated or can be uh, formed in the patient's body. And uh, then th that new blood uh, gives immunity as well as uh, kind of life to the patient. So this is the basic thing about the stem cell, that is the seed. Uh, how we collect the seed was told by Dr. Gaurav Khare already. We have to inject certain injections so, so that we can collect those seeds easily from the blood. And then coming to the patient part. So we have a patient of a blood cancer or, or of a blood disease which can be cured with the stem cell transplant. So what we do, we have to prepare the patient first so now, uh, you know the initial part that we, uh, we have a patient, we have a donor which is having a HLA match with the patient as a suitable donor and we have collected the stem cell from the donor also. So coming to the patient, we have a patient of uh, blood disease which can be a cancer, which can be thalassemia, which can be aplastic anemia or can be some inborn error of metabolism which can be cured with the stem cell transplants. So what we do is we have to prepare patient's body to receive those foreign stem cells or from uh, f some seeds from other field. So for this preparation, we have to give certain chemotherapies or certain medicines. And what these chemotherapies do, uh, these chemotherapies, first of all, they ablate patients on stem cells. Because patient is having his, uh, his or her own stem cells which are diseased. So we have to ablate or we have to actually kill those stem cells, patients, defective stem cells. And at the same time, we have to prepare the patient's body to accept those foreign or uh, different stem cells. So there are certain combination of medicines, we call it conditioning regimen. It's, uh, the duration of conditioning regimen is approximately one week. It can vary from five, six days to 10 days, but average duration of conditioning therapy is uh, seven days, one week. And thereafter, after this conditioning regimen, we give those stem cells to the patient. And the, uh, how we give it, it's just an intravenous infusion. It's very simple. We just connect those stem cells through a uh, IV line, and we infuse those stem cells directly into the veins, common veins. It's just like a simple blood transfusion or platelet transfusion. And then what happens, those stem cells carry certain specific antigens on their surface, and they know that where they have to go. So those stem cells circulate in the patient's blood, and then finally they go into the bone marrow spaces in their field and then they got impacted there in the bone marrow spaces. And after a few days they started producing new blood. Uh, this, this is called generation of new blood or uh, uh, hematopoiesis, uh, new hematopoiesis or we call it engraftments. So we have given stem cells, those stem cells are now started producing blood and we call it engraftments. So three steps, conditioning regime, stem cell infusion, and then engraftment. The total duration is approximately three to four weeks. One week is conditioning, one day is infusion, and then next two to three weeks for engraftment. So this is the whole process, and what happens thereafter? Because it's, a, it's something different which is patient receiving. It's not patient's own thing. It's, it's a foreign thing. So there can be some fights between the patient's body, patient's tissue, and those new stem cells. And this fight is called graft versus host disease. Graft is the stem cell, host is your patient. So there can be certain fights and uh, we have to deal with those fights. We have to give certain medicines to control those fights. And it usually takes around six months to one year to settle those fights and to get the stem cells adjusted 
in patient's body. So patient has to be continued on close follow-up at least for three to six months and maybe some uh, distant follow-up uh, for next six months and that's all. Sometimes what happens in this phase, few patients get that graft versus host disease. Few patients actually um, uh, find it very difficult to get adjusted with those stem cells. Those stem cells started harming patients from inside. They can cause skin reactions like rashes, redness over the whole body. They can damage patient's liver, causing jaundice, liver damage. And occasionally, those stem cells can damage patient's intestine and leads to diarrhea and vomiting, which is actually very difficult to treat conditions. So approximately 30 to 40 percent of the patients can get such kind of reactions, that is graft versus host disease. And out of those 30 to 40, we can say that maximum of the patients respond to the treatment. So we have treatment for the disease also, and most of, the, most of those patients can be treated and can be cured out of the, that disease also. But occasionally we lose patients with that disease also. So there is a risk of mortality, risk of death because of those reactions. Small risk, we can say that out of 100, four or five patients can actually die because of that uh, deadly reaction. So this can happen, but in, in the range of 5%. Five, uh, 5 and apart from that, uh, uh, during this phase, patient is immunocompromised. Patient is not having his own immunity and the donor stem cells has not yet started working fully, though they have started producing blood, but the immunity is not yet fully taken over. So the patient remains immunocompromised for initial six months or maybe up to one year. So during that phase, he or she is at high risk of acquiring infections. There can be many infections, fungal, there can be TB, tubercular infection, can be other bacterial infections, certain viruses like cytomegalovirus, so these are actually very bad infections. These, uh, these infections can take life also. So we have to monitor the patient for those infections and at the first instance of those infections, we have to treat those infections with very effective drugs. So these are the compli complications which can happen uh, to oc occasional of the patient. But ultimately, what we get, uh, we get a good chance of survival, a, ch a good chance of cure from the deadly diseases. So we have a patient of AML, uh, we have given her chemotherapy. Now, if we don't do a transplant, we know that this patient is certainly not going to survive or uh, the, the AML will not uh, let her survive. And at the same time, if we, get, we give the stem cell transplant to that patient, there, are, there is very high probability, around 60% chance that this patient can be cured of the cancer. Five to 10% chance that this patient actually can uh, may not survive even after transplant because of the complications, because of the disease. So ultimately what we get, 0% uh, survival to around 60% survival in a deadly disease. That's the impact of transplantation. The longest follow-up I've seen um, is uh, five years, uh, uh, I think seven, eight years from the transplant. Uh, I had, I had a young patient, young male patient of acute myeloid leukemia. There is a very aggressive blood cancer. And uh, he, he received a stem cell transplantation from family donor. And now, after five years, he's married, he's having a family, he, um, uh, he has a child also. And we have certain other patients uh, who have underwent transplantation from unrelated donor. Uh, I ca can I introduce my patient who is present here? Later on, okay. Okay, fine. So certain patients are there who have received transplant from unrelated donors. Uh, unrelated donor transplant, we can say, is a little more complicated. When we get a stem cell from a person who is not having any blood relation to you, then it has to be a little more complicated than the related transplantation. So because there is a more genetic diversity between the donor and recipient, so there will be more chances of reactions, graft versus host disease and more kind of immunosuppression for those patients. But it's still chances of survival in the range of 60%. So I think that's it. Any question in this uh, transplant process and uh, follow up? Yes. Yeah, number of stem cells, yeah. 
uh, there is a very defined number of stem cells required by the patient. We need at least 3 million stem cells per kg body weight. So whenever we collect a stem cell from the donor, we do testing. That was the number of exact number of stem cells in that product. And then we, uh, we give uh, the uh, required volume of that product to the patient. So it should not exceed also, not, not should, ex should not exceed more than six or eight million per kg, but it should not be less than three million per kg also. Volume, if you say volume, the volume is around 200 to 300 ml, is the total volume collected from the donor. And then we, yeah, yeah? Yeah, approximately, yeah. That's less than one uh, unit of blood actually, if you, if you say, less than one unit of blood. So uh, if patient is obese, yeah, if patient is obese, so suppose patient is 100, yeah, patient is 100 kg and donor is 20, 30 kg, what happens? So uh, actually it doesn't make much of the differences. Uh, if donor is, uh, if the patient is obese, we have to uh, adjust patient's body weight. We have to, actually we, we just cannot give any medicine or stem cell according to the actual weight if it's obese. We have to adjust or, um, that is called idealized body weight. So we have to give medicines as well as stem cells according to the idealized. Apart from that, uh, it doesn't matter the, whether the donor is thin, very weak or obese. Usually the donor is having, adult person is having approximately four liter of blood in his body. And he is able to, he or she is able to donate adequate number of stem cells for up to 100 kg of a person. Usually what happens when we have a adult healthy donor, we usually can collect up to two to three times higher number of stem cells in the similar volume. So usually we get higher number of stem cells. The procedure is one time, but suppose uh, sometimes it happens that donor is very elderly person, say so 70 years, and we are not able to find adequate number of stem cells in one go. Suppose we need three million stem cells per kg for the patient and the donor could have given only 1.5 or 2 million per kg stem cells in first day. Then we have to collect it on second day also. Okay, it, it happens occasionally only. Say out of 100, maybe three or four, uh, only two instances can be there. Yes? How many times? How many times a person can donate stem cell in his or her lifetime? Yeah, n number of times. Any, uh, <laughs> it actually, uh, it's, it's like there's nothing, you are losing nothing from the body. It's just a seed which, which is replenished on the next day. Yeah, Same day. Replenished. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a very fast process. Self-renewal. So like yeah, this is the registry's guideline. Yeah. 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 So, the, so registries guideline are definitely there, but biologically we can say that a person can donate stem cells, blood, platelets for n number of times in his or her life. There's nothing which is losing from the body. It, it gets replenished in due course. So uh, blood in three months, platelets in three days, stem cell in one, one day only. Yes. Uh, is there a provision of storing the blood stem cells? Yes, 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 yes. If the door is not yeah. available at the time of... Yes, yes, yes. yes. Stem